they're not in bad condition but as we're restoring the whole bike then uh, we need to do something with them so I'll start with the, with the back brake first so what I've got to do is I've got to strip it down and I've left everything attached as it was on the bike because we need to get the, the cylinders out what does your stop in and this is what they call a floating disc a floating brake so these when they're in there they're allowed to float around a bit why because it stops the disc binding up yeah. if everything was fixed and you had a little wobble in your disc it would bind so this because they can float, they don't they don't drag. Okay, so that is I think that's zinc plated. I'll have a look at that. So that can go in my black bits. This is a little spring plate which keeps your pads down. This one cover so you pump it you can do this when it's still on the bike so one's coming out a bit faster than the other what we're trying to do is get both of these out all right and the best way of getting these out some people wrongly will get something like that and I'll put it around there and I'll give it a, which is shit idea you damage them so the best way to get them out even if they're really seized in is use your cylinder and pump them out like that and what you might find is once seized solid so what you need to do is just put something in this side whatever you've got to hand something like that so the idea is you want them both to pop out but just at the same time so I get some old bits of rag Brake fluid's not very nice. Right. So take the cylinders out. As you can see, these are quite pretty good nick. What you're looking for is any pitting, any marks on that door, and they all look good. Never reuse brake shoes. brake pads not shoes I think they're trying to do that 12 mil spanner I don't know why but a lot of Japanese bikes only use 12 mil so this is a banjo fitting so it's all feed goes in that little hole and out through that little hole it's the master cylinder important don't lose them but you probably replace them anyway so this one needs to be put in the yellow passive pot these are all my nuts and bolts and stuff that's all got to be yellow all right we need to get our little protector off Carefully. Right, that goes with me odds and sods. So you just need lots of little boxes. So in there's a little circlip. Okay. Circlip, I can go replace that probably anyway. If you look at that, look. Like, in Suffolk, we'd say that's slightly on her. You can see it's bent. So what, we need to sort that out. So I can't just put it in there because it needs repairing. So in here, we've got a little piston which should pull out. Wrong tool for the job. So I always use the right tool for the job unless I'm doing it. OK, 
Okay, there's your piston with your two seals on it. All right. One master cylinder. So that low ring there will probably change that as well. But that's it. Replace that clip or straighten it out because it's a bit slightly on the hair. Huh? Okay, so little reservoir. That's where your fluid goes. There's your main brake line, so we'll clean that up as well. This is the bleed nipple. Okay. So things are ready, you know, serviceable. They're just crappy finishes. They can just go straight in the boxes. So these seals, square section seals. These is like a double lip seal in there. So just to keep the dust out. And the reason these get tight is because um, corrosion gets behind these. See that? All that needs to be cleared out. And what happens is that corrosion builds up and it makes the seal tight. So when your brakes are binding, that's the cause. So that strip, that's all ready to be vapor blasted. There's one that's been vapor blasted. Yes. So that's just like a little bit of time in the vapor blaster. So these are the front brakes. Front brakes much more powerful than the rear. Right, these have been in here forever. So, if you just try and undo that, the chances are you're going to wring that off. I'll show you what happens when um, people don't take this off apart. And what you want to do is just give it a little shock. So, put the, doing that, what you're doing is you just take the tension out of the screw slightly. Okay. Take your R clip out. Here's your little pin. There's your pads. Pads out. So this is the same method as we've done before. We need to get all these pistons out. So you use the hydraulics. You get them to some, you know, if they're moving like that, a chance so you can blow them out of an airline. So the next thing to do would be undo these bolts and pull these calipers apart. So that's what one looks like once it's been taken apart and vapor blasted. So I've still got a little bit of corrosion to get out. This is where the seals sit get them painted then they can all go back together there was a broken screw in it look. so I'm going to show you how to get that out okay. all right see that Well, the tip of that, we will weld that to the nut. This is all stuff I've taken off the bike. Most motorbikes are coated, all the metal parts, if they weren't protected, would look like that after about a year. What they do is they put a zinc electroplating on it, and then what they do is they colour it. So this is called a passivate layer. So there's lots of different names for it, but this is called iridescent, they call it, I think, or yellow passivate. Okay. 
And when I take stuff apart, I just I look at you know you can normally find something that's been protected by a bit of rubber. Or, so here you can see that's that's more silver than it is yellow. So that should be in my silver pot. The same with that. Okay, and these these are all parts that require replating. Spindles, everything, nuts, bolts, everything I've taken off. You try and identify what colour it is. See, that's more yellow. You can see it on the underside. And then you try and just group it. And keep everything separate. That's a proper tin of quality street. Look at the size of it. None of these modern day tins, is it? Look at the size of that. That's nearly 120 mil high, that is. Right, so what's in my quality street box? So I've been pulling everything apart to um, to go and get it all blasted. It all needs to be sandblasted, so I'm trying to get all the bits together to get over to the blasters. This is me bit that holds the clocks. And this had a little repair done to it. I've got some pictures of that which you can splice into your video, Molly. So I had to put a little TIG weld on there. Okay, because this was broke. That's why this is a bit rusty, because I paper blast cleaned it. So we've got our clock round the frame for that. Side stand, we've got another little repair video for that as well. Well, not a video, but I can show you some pictures. This was a second hand stand that I bought, and it had obviously been crashed, been down the road. So when the stand was up and the bike's gone down like that, this bit was worn flat. So what I've done is I've welded a, built this up with weld, filed it off so we've got our little knob at back. So that's all ready, that can be blasted. That's the rear brake caliper carrier. So this had a big roller bearing in it. So cool stuff like this, this is part of the suspension linkage. These have bearings in, which you need to get out. So you have your little roller bearing in there, take your seal out. Put that in the vise, okay, do your vise up, and what that does is pushes it, pop, into there. And you get them out without damaging them, so you can put them back in. So this is all stuff. All needs to be painted. Okay, this is obviously black, black, silver. I think that's all that's in the quality street tin today.